Hi, I'm Sandy Babb and welcome to my studio. Um, this is part two of a Craft With Me tutorial series I'm doing for the hashtag Just Junk Journal Challenge hosted by Dear Julie Julie. I'll leave links down in the description box for that and for part one where we started building the cover and um, I have my little chunky monkey journal ready to um, do the inside and um, what I'm going to use for this is I have um, some of the packing paper I have um, so a bottle of water and some wallpaper paste. You can use a Mod Podge or other kind of glue. You know, you want more of a thinner glue, not necessarily a thick. You could use, you know, matte medium too if you want to. It's just a little thicker. Um, <clears throat> and I have a piece of my cereal box that I cut. It's kind of thicker there so I can scoop and, and have an applicator. I'm also using uh, my nonstick mat and some um, gloves because I just don't, I hate glue on my hands and I also brought over to show you that I had in the book that I'm using it has these end papers and this um, that I haven't used for anything and they're really pretty they, you know really leathery looking so I think I'm going to do a little bit of a treatment with those also and that will be what I'm going to use if they're long enough I didn't even check oh barely I might can I might be able to use those. I may have to piece them. But I'm planning on probably using some of the end papers here where these join and these, these seams show. So that's kind of my thing. I'm not so worried about this little raw edge. I'm kind of going to leave that and use some of my ink um, and just kind of ink that. That one's a little, needs a little trimming right there. There's a little... That little edge right there is not even. Um, this kind of goes all the way across almost to a little teeny tiny point that I didn't get that cut right. There it goes. That's better. Um, and I'm going to use a little bit of my ink that we're allowed to use and just ink that. And I'm going to just leave that raw. You know, normally if I'm doing a journal, I'm going to use paper that folds over. But since this was a printed box that I used, I, you know, I didn't have anything that was going to be over. And I don't mind that. So it is a, supposed to be a junk journal. So I'm going to set these two pieces aside right now because I don't need those right now until I finish the outside of the outer cover. Don't need my scissors. So, what you're going to need is some paper, some brown packing paper. And I'm not sure how I folded this up. I just kind of shoved it in there. It's kind of all torn and a mess. Okay, that's a good piece right there. I'll take the rest of this aside. Don't feel like I need that. I'm going to take some of this paper and get some larger pieces of it. Just kind of Here's some pieces of it. I need to save some of it for pages, but I, I think I've got enough for pages that I can yeah, do some of it. Just going to this in some kind of hunks. Like this. I need one more big hunk. Should be enough. If it's not, I've got some left. But she got a big package. <laughs> my friend of mine gave me this paper. So I'm going to take my paper. I'm going to work with it in smaller chunks than that. And take your water bottle and just mist the paper. Now to soak it, we're just going to break the fiber down just a little bit. Mist it on both sides and just wad it up in a ball. Just mit, wad it up a lot, like a lot, you know, in a little crumply ball. And you're going to do that to all your papers. And since you've got that step, I'm going to pause you and do this and come back because I don't want to, you know, make you sit through anything unnecessary. So I'm going to spray and crumple and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got all these sprayed and crumpled. Now, you're going to do what I say, not as I do. Isn't that what your mother always said? Let me 
go in a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing when I get going here in a minute. Um, you're going to let these dry, okay? I usually have some of these prepped in my studio. I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and use them wet to show you the next step, okay? These would be dry. Once they're dry, you uncrump them. And you kind of want to, you know, work them while they're wet because you kind of want to soften the fibers of this paper, you know. And then you're just going to let them dry in these little balls, you know, um, however long it takes, overnight or a few hours or whatever. I'm going to go ahead and use them wet. Mine is not going to have the wrinkly texture I want because I am using them wet. Um, they're better, like, see, because these wrinkles can kind of pull out because this is still wet and it's pliable, see? We don't really want that to pull out. But what you're going to do is unfold these and just tear them up in some pieces. You know, some workable pieces. You don't want too giant of a piece, but, you know, you want workable pieces. So you're going to tear these up. And I'm going to go ahead and work with mine because... Like I said, I don't have any prepped, and if I had thought in advance, I would have done these yesterday, and they would have been dry and all that. But I'll still get pretty much the effect, and I'll show you what the real effect looks like when it's done. And tell you some hints you can do to it after you're done. So, I'm going to pause you while I rip paper, because I don't think you want to sit and watch me rip paper. And I'll be back once I have all this ripped up, okay? Okay. I got a nice crumply pile of papers. I just kind of squish mine back up so that maybe as they're drying as I'm working, they'll, you know, work their little magic. I've got my wallpaper paste over here to the side. Like I said, you can use other glue. It just needs to be a slightly more liquid glue. If you're using a thicker glue, you might want to just slightly water it. And I am using rubber gloves for this because I hate glue on my hands, which is crazy. You know, to be an artist and you hate glue on your hands. It just drives me nuts. I hate glue on my hands. Probably should have taken off my jewelry. I didn't think about that. Okay. Push up the sleeves because like all my clothes have some kind of gunk on them, it seems like. Okay. And what I'm going to do is the lid's got some glue on it. You're just going to kind of dunk this in there like it's... Um, kind of like um, you're doing um, paper mache. I like to get it nice and gunky, you know. Now, when this is dry, it's going to hold wrinkles better. Mine's not going to have a lot of really good wrinkles. And you're going to start placing your paper. Now, you can go over the edge a little bit if you want to trim. I'm going to try to keep mine up to the edge. Let there be some wrinkles and stuff. If it goes over the edge, don't worry about it. Ooh, that one just tore. Let me get, get that on that seam. I was trying to get that. There's a little straight edge here, and I'm just going to get butted up to that edge. If you go over, it doesn't matter. But what you're going to do is you're going to collage, decoupage, whatever you want, whatever kind of age word you want to use. And this, wetting this breaks down the fibers in the paper. And when you do this, you can blend the, the, the paper into itself. And it really gets a really leathery texture. And so that's what I'm kind of going for on my, um, and since I'm going to be using my hands getting this glue in here like this, I'm just going to let some of mine go over the edge and I'll trim it when I'm done. But you want it, when you put a piece of paper down, blend it into itself. You know, um, you can blend it into itself. And so that's why I said it needs to be a little bit more of a, a, a slightly more liquid type glue. And I'm not tucking it over the sides. I'm just letting it fall over the sides. And then you just kind of gently can blend. And it blends the paper because we've dampened it and broken the fibers down. It blends the paper in. And I'm going to do the whole inside of my book like this. Um, and like I said, I'm going to just let it hang over the edges and I'll trim all that and neaten it up when I'm done. But mine won't be as crinkly because I am using the paper damp. It's really better if you wait and let this paper dry and let it let the wrinkles sit in it. It's so much better. But you just want to make sure. I try not to get any straight edges. If you have a straight edge, try to put it toward the, you know, the side. And just kind of blend 
and I'm just gonna and it looks like a hot mess this is gonna dry clear um, it will dry clear and it's just kind of a meditative thing you know you might want to have an ebook I mean a uh, um, audio book or a podcast or a YouTube video going a TV a music something um, to do this because it's gonna take a little bit to do the whole thing but this is what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna go over the entire portion of my book and um, you know you can start spreading some ooh, oh I tore that see it doesn't work as well I'm just gonna be honest with you this doesn't work as good if the paper's wet because it's easier to tear you really want to let it dry and that's why I said do as I say not as I do but I did want to go ahead and show you what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna stop the camera right here because I don't think this is gonna be repetitive all over this whole cover and I think you've got the gist of it and I'll come back once I have all this paper applied so I'll see you on the other side okay fooled you no <laughs> I came back for a second to show you something else you could do if you want to you can spread some of your adhesive down like this and get your paper on there and kind of you know wrinkle and spread and wrinkle and spread and get a little bit more on your finger and go over it and also, I, I realized I didn't show you what I was going to do with this um, piece here. Since I don't have like a credit card or something to spread, once I get this on and it's set a little bit, don't do it immediately because if you do it immediately, the glue is not, the paper's not set enough, it's still wet. Do this very gently, go over it, and this will make sure you don't have any air bubbles. But you're going to want to let that sit just a little while and, you know, kind of see how that see how that wrinkled up that's why you don't want to do it while it's too wet I am gonna just kind of use some of that glue and smush it back down but don't do it while it's too wet but take a piece of your extra cardboard or something and gently I'm gonna let that dry a little bit but those are two other ways of applying the paper okay so I'll be back now that that's a little bit done you can take this and very very you have to be very gentle or you'll start you know moving your thing you just want to make sure everything's got good contact really good contact and if anything needs to be smoothed together just really good contact and this also kind of gets some of the excess glue off you can kind of get some of the that excess glue. Now this side I'm going to be super careful with because I just put this down. And let me kind of see if I can blend that in with my tool where I'm messing it up. I kind of messed that up a little bit too. Try not to mess it up too bad. Uh, I did there too. Let me see if I can blend that back in. Okay. Let me see any parts that I want to kind of smooth down I want to make sure I don't have any air bubbles and I don't you you if you use your fingers to, you know applying this you really I don't I don't see anything that resembles an air bubble okay now I'm gonna take my dryer to this and then I'll come back I know you don't want to listen to you know a dryer tool so I will be back in just a moment Okay, I've done a little bit of drying, and I can see areas where I've got some thickish glue. And if you want to take that out so it doesn't bubble while you're heating, take a baby wipe and blot your project. Carefully, lightly blot it in those areas where there's deep white glue. You don't want that um, deep white looking glue. It will bubble up as you're heating it. Unless you want bubbles and stuff in there. I don't want bubbles on mine. But see how this area, I don't know, let me hold it, see if I can hold it up for you. See how that area, the glue is really built up? When I blot it, you can tell in that little circle how it takes it out. So that's what I'm talking about. You're not removing the glue off the project. You've got enough in there, under and on top of, that this is going to stick. But if you don't want it to bubble while you're using your heat tool, it is a really good idea to take a baby wipe and blot. Um, 
and get that excess glue off of there so it doesn't bubble up. I see, I think I see a spot right there that doesn't, I'll show you when, when it's dry, you can go in and repair. I, can, I think I see a spot that doesn't, maybe there, there, and there that does not have paper, I'm not sure. But get, ooh, when I pulled that up, I did not mean to do that. Go back down there. Yeah, and if you see anything that you think needs to be smoothed, any of those really super wrinkle parts, you can kind of push those down too with your finger. I do do that part with a bare finger because it's just one little tip of my finger and I can wipe it off immediately. But Okay, now I'm going to go back to drying now that I've shown you the blotting and I'll be right back. Okay, I've done a bit of drying and I want to show you something. I've only dried on this side a little bit. You can see right here right here 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 and here I can actually see if you look they're kind of white they're showing up as little white spots on the camera let me there we go see those spots that's where I missed the paper you know so you can repair that by simply taking a little bit of your paper um, and you can't, it's hard to tell because I was applying brown paper to brown cardboard. There was nothing for me to kind of see through there. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue there, take a little random piece of that paper, and blend it in. And I'm going to cover any of those spots that I see that I missed. There's another glaring one right there. And after I get this pretty pretty dry enough that I can see any repairs I need to make. I'm going to let it continue to dry on its own and then I'm going to wait it. Um, I see a little spot there and a tiny one there. And I'm just taking a little rip of the paper and you can repair this. This is going to have a beautiful leather look on the inside when we're done. Look like a leather end paper inside our book. And I may repeat this process on a separate piece of cardboard of the, the um, of the cereal box. The pa the end papers I had on my book are not quite long enough, so I may make this be my corners, like little leather strip corners. So I may repeat this process again, and if I do, I will certainly tell you and show you. I've got a couple of um, spots down here too that didn't. And so as I'm drying, like I said, I'm just going to figure out where, if I've got any little holes or anything, and I'll just take little pieces of paper and repair that. Um, and that's pretty common for that to happen. It's kind of hard when everything's wet to see, you know, what you're doing. You can kind of just, with your finger, blend it in. You're going to want to blot a little bit with the, you know, the excess glue off so it won't bubble when you're drying. And you go back to your drying. Now, I do see one teensy, it's just a teeny spot, but my eyeball spots it so I think I want to cover it you know okay I think that's it for this side I'm gonna I'm gonna dry over this again and then continue drying to the other side I'm sure there's more repairs but I did want to come in and show you how you can make a repair if you see that you've missed a little spot so I'll be back in a moment okay now I have gotten my paper clips from my binding kit and I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm going to figure out where this is supposed to bend. And let's see, where, did my, where's, where am I bending? Right here. I want to kind of get that bend back in my book. And then I'm going to just kind of smooth with my fingers. I want it to, to be in its natural position. Okay, it's supposed to bend there. And then my book is supposed to bend here. I'm going to kind of fold that in and get it in its natural position like this. And if I need to, oops, let me hold my ruler up. I might need to take my ruler and gently press in that corner and press that paper back down because it's still damp and I can still do this right now without it tearing. Um, I'm doing this while it's wet so the paper doesn't crack. And I have gotten my four clips from my binding kit. So see, I've kind of smoothed all that down. And everything's in there. I'm not worried about all these raggedy edges and stuff. That'll go away. I'm going to do it on the other side and get my spine bent into its natural position. My book 
the warp came out of my book when I um, dried it. So I don't think it's going to warp. I don't think I'm going to need... Ooh, scratch that with my fingernail. Still wet. So it's even though it looks kind of dry, it's still wet. Okay, so now that I've got that like that, I'm going to clip this in its natural position to dry. I'm just going to overlap it slightly. I don't want it to stick together. You know, I better put some um, some paper between this. I better put something non-stick between it because I don't want it to stick together. Let me get a little piece of wax paper because I don't want to stick my book together wherever I'm clipping it. I'm going to fold a little piece of wax paper because I don't want that to... I'm just going to put it in, mostly in its natural position. I'm just going to clip it right here. Kind of, I've got it overlapped slightly and just clip it. And I'm going to do that with another little piece on the other end. I just don't want to stick my book. I'm going to put this piece down the middle because I don't want anything sticking where it ain't supposed to stick. Fold this one. Boy, that was good grammar, wasn't it? Oh, my English teacher would not like that. It ain't supposed to stick. Um, and I'm clipping those. And now, I'm going to let this book sit in this natural position of how it's bent. And the reason I'm doing that, because if I let it dry flat, and then I started, even if I, you know, kind of um, gently scored that seam, it cracks your paper. And so it's better if you can get it almost in its natural position and let it dry, and you have less lifting and cracking. See, I just have it, whoops, let's see. Oh. There we go. Okay. See, I just have it overlapped and I put the wax paper in there so it won't stick to each other. So this piece of the project is going to be put aside and um, dry, let it dry and we will come back and um, I'll add the finishing touches to this video if it's not too long already. Okay, I have let this dry overnight and I've unpinned it. And you can see that it holds its shape pretty well. I feel like I have a little bit of a bow in these two little front panels. So what I'm probably going to do is after I get this all trimmed up is open it out flat. And I'm going to weight it under some heavy books to kind of get it more, you know, flattened out. Because it kind of wants to just, I mean, it wants to spring back into its natural position, which is fine. But, you know, when you're using it, you don't want it to be... You know, you want it to have some flexibility. And um, I did have a tiny bit of a lift right here. I don't know if you can see that, that there's a tiny bit of a lift of pa whoops, paper right there. I'll just take a little bit of glue and glue that right back down. And I do see one little spot, a little naked spot right there that I missed. But, um, so I've unclipped and I'm going to just trim all this excess off the edges real quick and um, I don't know if I'm going to finish the cover now or wait until I, I may wait until the journal's done this could be the dis, the destruction it was kind of destruction wasn't it um, construction of the cover without going into the decorative parts well it's going to be hard to cut without a an exacto knife would be amazing right now. <laughs> but I didn't choose that as my cutter. So I'm going to have to use scissors uh, the best I can um, to get that even. Get all that little excess stuff off there. And maybe I can cut it better from this. I can't see though very well to I want to make sure I'm not cutting into the box, that I'm just cutting the paper. That piece right there has got a little, little fudgy piece. Maybe I can kind of pull it away. Peel it away. There we go. That's better. Get it all cleaned up. And then, like I said, I think I'm going to go ahead and weight it under some heavy books. And let it sit while I work on other parts of the journal and come back to it. This gives you the idea 
of some of the construction that I'm doing here. And I'll show you a little better look at this kind of leather treatment. And you can go over the paper on the inside with matte medium if you want to. Um, or a Mod Podge. I don't, I don't do Mod Podge because it's plasticky, but um, if you want to, you know, if you want to seal this paper, or if you just like this kind of rough texture, and this is beautiful on the outside too, and I can't do it in this video because um, it's not in the rules, but I do, there are paint treatments and that you could use inks and different things to rub on this and really bring out this texture. It doesn't capture so great on film, but it feels really cool. It's got a really cool feel to it. And um, it also adds some strength and stability to your book because you just basically wallpapered the inside of your book with all this, you know, thicker layer here. There's a little thick spot there on that paper. I have one little lift here too, so I'll go along the edges and make sure I don't have any lifting where I've trimmed. It's a little tag of paper there. Um, but if I have any lifting or have missed any spots, I'll go back and just, you know, make sure everything is down really well. But basically, I mean, there is a little trim spot there that needs it. It's just a little lot. I don't think I can get that. I may have to wait till I can use an exacto knife. But I mean it doesn't look bad and it's not bowed super bad. You can just see that there's just a little tiny cup right in this section of the cardboard. So basically that is my front and back. And I was trying to decide what to do with this section here. I mean, I don't really have to um, do that, I don't guess. Um, but I, I, it did, to me, it just looks a little warpy here on the front, so it looks like it does need to be weighted. And I've got a couple of little loose edges where I cut away right there that I guess I didn't get glued to the edge, so I'll fix that. But in the meantime, I was thinking about what to do about these little areas and I don't know if I'm going to use more of the calendar or what. So I'm going to call this portion done. All I'm going to do off camera that you won't see is just touch up any edges and touch up that little loose paper. Let it dry. I'm going to stretch it back out, weight it down with some books so I get the cupping. There is a slight cupping here, here, and here. It's right in the middle of these boxes. These didn't do it, but these did. And I kind of want to flatten it more. So that's where I'm going to stop there. In the next video, I will start making signatures for this journal. And I think the last one is when I'll put it all together and then decorate the cover. So um, that's going to be my cover construction thus far. Thanks for joining me.